And hello all and thanks a lot for everyone joining this webinar and um, I'll be taking about 30 to 35 minutes to uh, go through my presentation and beyond that if you have any questions we could uh, take that up. So uh, my topic for today is enabling safe access to mass transit. So before I sort of start my actual content of the presentation I thought I could throw light upon a few uh, scenarios which are happening on ground and these are some of my encounters on ground with different people while I was doing my work um, in, in, with respect to the safe access. So let's say, um, you know, consider a case of um, this person called Suresh in Bangalore and he says that I prefer riding for about 40 minutes to office than uh, taking metro uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, that's because he doesn't like bargaining uh, you know, the auto ride, uh, which is from his house till the metro. So he rather prefer, prefers to spend a little extra time to just go directly rather than uh, worrying about uh, the issue of the auto and how does he has to negotiate with the auto driver. Similarly, if we take up a case of uh, this Leela Ben in Ahmedabad, where we have the BRT in Ahmedabad, as much as she loves uh, taking this BRT bus, what she says is she's, that she struggles reaching back to her house in the evening um, after her work because she has to walk through a dark isolated road to reach her house uh, because of which she feels um, unsafe to walk along that path. Um, and if we take a case of Babulal in Delhi, uh, he says it's really tough to get customers because of e-rickshaws which have been uh, recently launched in Delhi and autos uh, and bikes, which I mean the private two wheelers. So, uh, so we have set a higher fare uh, to earn minimum money on a daily basis. So they have to sort of negotiate with different fares with the customers in order to match uh, with e-rickshaws and autos. And also the fact that um, uh, the e-rickshaws and autos are faster. And so uh, these set of people are struggling to get their daily wages. So having said this, um, all of this uh, connects to a certain aspect. And the question also is, hence, so what is missing? in this or what, what is the actual problem which is faced by these people. So the broadly to address uh, the city, uh, cities are investing millions of dollars in creating these kind of mass transit systems, be it Metro or BRT. So it's the new boom in the kind of development which is happening. But what often happens is they are unable to achieve the full potential um, of population or, or the users who are going to use this mass transit because of this poor first and last mile connectivity. And hence uh, it becomes, um, the uh, access becomes unsafe to these um, um, transit systems. And towards the end, because of the poor first and last mile connectivity, it leads to this inefficient use of these mass transit systems and unsafe conditions in station areas. Hence safer and seamless access needs to be provided in the cities to sort of discourage private transport and encourage public transport. So what we mean to say is the, the missing um, or the, the missing link over here is we've invested a lot of money in public transport, but we're totally missing to pro, um, the, the provision of these last mile and first mile services. So the question is what we need to do for this. And that's exactly what the need for safe access addresses. So, even to address the other aspect is as much as it is important to provide these first and last mile connectivity, what is critical to understand here is this um, provision shouldn't just become mere infrastructural provisions, but also provide an experiential approach. And I'll get into detail of this in, in the next um, upcoming slides. So when we talk about safe access, access to mass transit as a component, um, what I'm going to do is um, cover four particular uh, four parts in the pre presentation. First is, I thought uh, it's important to just give a quick re recap of what happened in the previous uh, webinar. And uh, since we are talking about TOD, safe access becomes a part of, of this TOD as a, as a component, which is basically a public consultation component. And finally, to understand uh, safe access and its principles and, and how it has been, uh, how we have applied this uh, on real case scenarios across different uh, um, cases. And finally, to just conclude on that. Firstly, to understand uh, what is transit-oriented development, 
it is basically um, you know creating concentrated nodes of moderate to high density development supporting a balanced mix of land uses around transit stations so you have, if there is a transit station and there is a metro station what tod tries to do is create this 500 to 1 kilometer um, area which we call that as a tod zone and try to concentrate development around that so eventually when when we have multiple stations of this sort along with the station areas that sort of forms a tod zone in the city and and station area like i mentioned refers uh, to an area which is a, at a walkable uh, range uh, around the metro station so what has wri done as a part of this tod and our approach has been in three parts uh, one is the regulatory framework where we have tried to develop a certain framework one is uh, for for example in delhi we try to develop a manual for transit oriented development and at the same time we have the other uh, framework as well the other part is uh, we have tried to develop certain demonstration projects and design interventions and, and a few examples of that uh, being one in nayarpur where we took up certain uh, sectors and try to develop that as an overall tod zone and similarly for an area called navanagar in hubli darwad where we try to develop uh, safe access and public spaces around the current brt station which has been proposed and third part uh, being the tod financing which talks about how to finance tod uh, at tod areas and and looking at the kind of investments it go as a part of development and we have been doing uh, workshops for urban development officials in different parts of the country regarding this to summarize uh, there are capi uh, this capacity building going on as a part of tod which is organized by wri as a part of design work it could be regulatory frameworks or it could be finance uh, as well so uh, to come down to the different products which we have developed as uh, as a part of uh, transit oriented development if you could see on the screen Uh, it's these uh, different kinds of products which have come up it could be neighborhood improvement partnership or developing regulatory frameworks and what we are focusing currently is the uh, uh, station um, access uh, uh, what we're focusing on is the uh, safe access tool right now so uh, what uh, safe access uh, does is uh, it tries to make tod as an inclusive process and and there is a need to make this as a people centric approach and hence uh, the public consultation process becomes very very important and what i'm trying to and to say here is as much as we invest time in experts and designing the projects around mass transit and and creating them uh, as tod zones it is equally important to consider people's opinion as a part of this development and to make it a successful successful project so hence the safe access comes as one of this approach where we could do public consultation uh, more effectively and, and and in much more organized manner so firstly to even understand just to go in a little more detail in terms of what we uh, call uh, what is safe access it is basically trying to create safe conditions for pedestrians and cyclists as well as the public transport in order to reach uh, your metro or any other kind of transit station so let's say if this is in a range of 500 meters to 1 km how best you can reach this particular metro station either by walking cycling or public transport and hence what is the kind of development proposals you would want to do to create this whole process more effectively and talking about the station area itself as its definition says it's not just a mere place of connectivity where different modes of transportation come together but it is also where you know it becomes a place for both a uh, work live shop and play and all of this happens simultaneously in the sense you you just don't see is uh, as an infrastructural or or a formal process of connectivity but also creating the station areas as livable zones in the city so to sort of achieve this whole aspect of safe access what we developed was um, we uh, these five principles which address the aspect of safe access um, the, the first one being the pedestrian and cycling priority 
where it basically talks about the interconnected neighborhoods and city networks in the sense how they bring in this larger networks of connectivity for cycling and walking where people could take uh, to reach the metro stations this could also be addressed in cases where let's say if there is a main road which takes about uh, which is about one and a half kilometers long and to go longer way using your car there could be sh these th through fares in the area or let's say a small path at descent to a, a canal or a stream um, in the neighborhood you could just create paths along that and take a shortcut to reach way more faster as much as compared to the time which takes in your car or your bike and it also talks about safe and comfortable pedestrian and cycling infrastructure services to sort of achieve this so hence you can see all these components shown in this graphic which it tries to achieve pedestrian and cycling priority the second component of safe access is the enhanced public realm where we say as much as it is important to uh, develop uh, pedestrian and cyclist uh, and our public space, uh, public transport networks it is also important to create safe and accessible public spaces in the area and and not just as individual entities but a larger interconnection of these public spaces through the cycling and walking networks at the same time how what if we also start imagining streets um, as public spaces where different activities happen with vending being one of the very critical component as a part of indian scenario so how do we start accommodating vending and other activities also as a part of streets and public spaces and it also talks about other aspects like signage uh, signage in the whole uh, area to give a proper direction for people the fourth component being the feeder integration feeder or we, as we also call them as IP, ipt where it's called intermediate para transit where when you get down from your metro or any other kind of transit you either end up taking an auto rickshaw or it could be a shared rickshaw or it could be even a feeder bus which is uh, dropping you the clo to the closest point or near or at your doorstep uh, to do the last mile connectivity so uh, as uh, so it is it, it becomes critical to look at this as an integrated uh, network in order to understand which are the routes you are going to designate for public uh, the feeder bus movement in order to bring a correlation with the metro or brd as as a mass transit so there is sort of interrelationship which exists and which which is also uh, implicable in terms of the time as the factor in order to let's say match the timings um, of the mass transit with respect to the feeder systems as well or it could be it could be locating these feeder systems around the mass transit which are which are easily accessible for the uh, users of the mass transit uh, the fifth one and the last one which is also important is where it talks about the parking management where we are talking about regulating on street and off street parking in station areas and uh, try to see how we can uh, firstly discourage um, the private vehicles uh, getting people getting private vehicles to uh, use this mass transit station and in turn work with any other alternative options and it also talks about how do we prioritize feeder buses uh, over there so when i say parking it's not literally just the private parking we are talking about it is also talking about let's say pick up and drop off bays for the buses or it could be cycle parking uh, around transit stations or it could be the ipt parking as well so it looks holistically looks at all these sectors and the final one we are talking about safety and security as an important component uh, where uh, like i mentioned in the earlier example where uh, one of the women sort of feels unsafe to walk along the dark streets when she goes in the night so how well we can design streets in a way that they are not only well lit and and good in terms of infrastructure but also you know how do we try to make them more lively in the night time or all throughout the day so this also reflects in the fact that what kind of land uses we we bring in to to bring in uh, activities throughout the day and 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 it's not like just put in commercial at one point of the day and post 7 o'clock or something where the whole area sort of becomes dark and dingy and lonely so it primarily looks at that particular component so in order to sort of summarize these are the five principles which i'm talking about and uh, unfortunately i don't have one of the slides where all these principles and the aspect of safe access is derived out of the safe access manual 
which was prepared by WRI and the manual is available online uh, which could be downloaded and it, it, it explains all these principles in detail and the safe access workshop which I'm going to talk about is a derivative of this manual which was a simpler version to engage with the communities. <coughs> yeah, so now coming to the aspect of safe access itself. Uh, safe access workshop is designed, was designed by WRI as an engagement product uh, where it, it is a platform to basically ideate and co-create last mile connectivity solutions around mass transit stations. The aim of this workshop was to educate participants regarding the need for safe access around the mass transit stations like BRT and Metro and to derive actionable strategies. So it was one of the pro one of the tools de designed in order to engage the communities and and uh, and uh, identify strategies and develop strategies in a more structured manner for the aspect of last mile connectivity in stations. So the objective of this particular workshop was to inculcate awareness about the importance of safe and equitable access around transit stations. Second was to derive implementable solutions. And third was prioritizing these solutions based on the roles which are given to, in order to understand that every particular stake, stakeholder in the area uh, becomes important as a part of decision making process. So what happens in this workshop is it is not designed to be a lecture based workshop or it is not de designed to be just as a presentation based workshop, but it is it's purely designed as a hands on experience for the stakeholders or the participants who become a part of this workshop and hence it is it's completely in an interactive format where we have the the interactive board and then we have the role play cards which which i'll explain later uh, so when we talk about the interactive board uh, it it is this board is actually uh, derived from the five principles which i explained uh, where you know there are detailed the strategies given for each of the principles if you see these uh, tables of different colors each of these tables indicate one particular strategy uh, one particular principle of safe access and there are uh, six strategies written under uh, each of these tables and so people uh, each group chooses one of these strategies and tries to work on that and similarly it also has details of how to play the Whole activity at the same time explaining what station area is and this just just does not end here where you are just choosing uh, different strategies by um, a year background or uh, in order to make people aware that every stakeholder is sort of important in the area and the decision made uh, is important for everyone what we also do is um, create this aspect of role play where you know if there are six participants in the group each participant tends to uh, get one of these roles where let's say it's uh, government authority, women on a wheelchair, or it could be teenager on a cycle, or it could be car owner or a private developer. So these are contrasting roles which sort of represent different class or, or different uh, types of stakeholders in a given area. And it has also happened that uh, we, have, we, have, we did certain workshops uh, which happened on ground where they had to switch roles and put themselves in different shoes and see how things work and when when each of these participants get this card which is a role play card and they have certain do's and don'ts and limitations of what they can pick and choose as and, and, and what what limitations they have when they choose the strategies on the board so using this role play card they start uh, choosing different strategies from the given principle. For example, let's say there is a public realm as one of the principles I've chosen and, and I have to choose one from the first three strategies and one option from the second three strategies. So eventually what this leads to is if you see uh, the table towards the right where you see these orange and blue dots, these are the dots, uh, 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 these are the choices made by individual participants. Uh, based on the role which they get and the next stage is they make a collective choice by discussing amongst each other uh, for the same set of strategies. So what happens here is basically lets the stakeholders firstly put themselves in, in, in a different uh, role 
and understand how other person thinks at the same time collectively prioritize and decide certain strategies and what we uh, and what eventually happens is there is a big confusion in the group the government is the one who is going to take the final call which sort of uh, 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 which sort of represents the same way what happens in a real situation. So it's about how best the government can take a decision by listening to the different stakeholders on ground. So uh, having said that, I uh, before I go to the applications implications of SAM, um, I just wanted to give like a small example. If if there is still confusion in this, uh, let's say if you are talking about road space and provision of A carriageway or or the driveway for cars, as as one of the strategy, where uh, let's say if if your role is you are a car owner, you will definitely fight for the space, uh, more space, uh, more driveway for on the road. Versus if you get a role of teenager on a cycle or a grandfather on a wheelchair, you would definitely uh, fight for the space out on the pedestrian or, or a better walkway for you to a better and a smoother walkway for you to walk on that and the the question lies in when you're doing your collaborative choices how best you can negotiate with each other and come to a, a come to a come to consensus in terms of choosing the best option which is suitable for both of you and that's what the government has to do in terms of listening to all the stakeholders and take the best decision possible for the neighborhood and we talk about applications and implications of uh, sam uh, the, the reason this was important to mention was uh, sam as a tool uh, was never designed as a hard and rigid tool uh, it has the ability to become flexible based on the different context uh, we have and the different types of st uh, stakeholders we got so this activity has been played across different sections right from uh institutions or it could be real scenarios on ground or it could be training the experts or the urban planners of the cities and the the activity has been modified based on the kind of requirement which was there uh, for each kind of activity and hence this has led to be a very uh, uh, important and, and a very useful tool for us to engage with different cities and experts and yet get the kind of outcomes uh, and derivatives we want um just to give a, a broad sense we have done this workshop in about 10 plus cities in india um, um and done this workshops in india across different cities and very recently in the last year we tried to experiment this across two uh, international platforms one was africa and second was taiwan uh, and the output and the response was really great because we realized that the context is very similar as compared to india so to give you a, a, a rough sense of how this tool played a different role based on different stakeholders and scenarios uh, one of this example was kochi where we tried to use this tool uh, as an initial engagement with kmrl which is the kochi metro uh, and try to uh, do this workshop around two metro stations in kochi Uh, which are which is Kalur and Lisi, which which are actually uh, uh, you know life projects uh, going on uh, around Kochi Metro, and we we played this with uh, stakeholders on ground. So we had the bus operators, we had uh, different urban experts, the resident welfare associations, everyone possible coming in and giving inputs as a part of workshop. So it led to the stakeholders themselves derive certain solutions. Uh, as, as per these five principles which you have mentioned and which turned out to be important proposals as as a part of this overall project and that actually led to uh, using these strategies as a part of proposals on ground in kochi go uh, this also led uh, us to engage with uh, uh, the kochi metro in more deeper way where we very recently did a signage and a safe access audit for the uh, for the kochi metro and the report has uh, been submitted as a as a as a part of a study to kmrl uh, this was another another interesting case which uh, happened in bangalore where um, we we developed this um, challenge for entrepreneurs called stamp which is station access and mobility program uh, where we are trying to look at entrepreneur solutions around the bangalore metro and uh, the safe access workshop uh, was one of the first workshop organized for these uh, entrepreneurs in order to engage with uh, citizens of uh, 
Bangalore at the same time bringing in experts um, on this platform. So the game, the, the game or the activity was modified to suit the entrepreneurial requirements uh, over here. And you could see the kind of, let's say the Bangalore police uh, coming into picture or the locals uh, trying to be a part of this whole program along with the entrepreneurs. So it was a very effective way to engage with the local communities yet achieve a kind of entrepreneurial solutions we wanted as a part of the challenge. Uh, similarly, uh, we have had a certain uh, smart city engagements, particularly one of the city was Davangere in Karnataka, where as a part of uh, area-based development, uh, safe access workshop was, was done as, as a kickoff workshop in order to engage, WRI to engage uh, with the uh, city corporation in Davangere and, and help them with the, as a part of area-based uh, development. Uh, it just didn't stop there. Uh, since WRI is empaneled as one of the 11 organizations um, as a part of Amrut program, uh, we used this particular workshop uh, to train the trainers. What we mean to say is uh, the important urban planners of the city and engineers um, of the city uh, were brought in uh, to discuss the important uh, um, aspects of uh, city development as well as smart city and and this tool helped them to make them understand what are the principles of safe access and which they used this further as a part of their work. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we, this was also organized as a part of uh, eco-mobility conference where we were the partner, one of the partners with ECLE and we did this masterclass uh, as a part of the conference where we had a different exp urban experts from all around the world and uh, we tried to engage this. It was very surprising for us to see that um, it, the context was so much more similar, uh, be it with respect to context of Taiwan or there was a participant from, let's say, Philippines and Africa, and they said that they did uh, experience a lot of similar issues around mass transit stations. And hence, this was a very great learning for them to, or a takeaway for them to sort of take this principle and apply it to their cities and, and see what best could be done. And, um, the, and we also did this in Addis and Ethiopia as a part of LUTP workshop, which is basically leaders in urban transport program, where uh, this program is uh, done through a case study and, and a hands-on approach for participants. And these are representatives, uh, engineers and urban experts throughout Africa who had come together on a single uh, table uh, to discuss the burning issues of mobility and urban development, particularly in tier two cities. And they strongly realized that um, the principles and, and the methodology of the workshop and the issues which were mentioned there, along with strategies, were very much applicable to the African context as well. And they felt that these could be not only just applicable for tier one cities, but, but very, very much applicable for the tier two cities of, of of lot more smaller scale as compared to cities like Addis. So in uh, just to conclude, uh, what we did um, as a part of this presentation was we did like a quick re a recap of the transit oriented development and how WR has main, uh, been mainstreaming TOD uh, as a part of design finance or regulatory frameworks. And one of the important factor being public engagement program and hence the safe access to mass transit comes into picture and where we try to understand what is safe access and the principles of safe access, which are the five principles I mentioned and the need for the tool and on why these kind of uh, tools are required in order to understand the aspect of last and first mile connectivity. And finally, we try to do a reality check on, on how this tool was important for us to engage with cities and different experts for different reasons and, and, and different uh, outcomes. And also what led to, uh, what kind of, uh, what kind of outcomes did this lead to in, in the form of implications of this? So in conclusion, all I want to say is, um, can we start relooking into the idea of mass transit, not as, you know, these individual in, infrastructural components, but as livable, spines of the city and not just see this as one infrastructure line passing on, on your city plan, but, but as a zone which, which creates life around itself. It's, it's like a thick zone which runs through the center of the city. 
and which and can we also look at safe access or on mass transit as more people oriented and a collaborative approach rather than making it a very infrastructural kind of a process with, with that i just want to conclude with this one last slide where we have very recently developed uh, this toolkit called enabling safe access to mass transit where we whatever i explained as a process of the activity that has been consolidated as a part of this toolkit and uh, it is going uh, up on web very soon but if you still are interested um, in knowing more about this you could definitely write to me or nandini or you could write to us so that uh, we could share this with you all uh, the safe access manual as well as the toolkit will be free uh, to download and and for to refer to so we'll be more than happy to assist you if required with that um, i will just end my presentation thank you nandini over to you thanks rajiv that was great thank you um rajiv i uh, thought i would just ask a couple of things to kind of get the conversation started you shared a few examples of how uh, this workshop has been used in different geographies and you mentioned that there are a lot of similarities in the challenges faced were there differences that you came across or ways in which it made sense to adapt the tool when you used it in taiwan for example or when you used it in addis yeah i mean it's it's i uh, i of course there will be um, certain differences compared um, as uh, we relate to the geographies and economic uh, position of these cities uh, it it was definitely there were differences for example uh, uh, there was one participant from philippines um, in in the taiwan workshop where we were trying to talk about the aspect of parking where we were trying to say that what if uh, the parking uh rate goes as high as 100 dollars would you still be willing to pay those 100 uh, dollars as a part of your parking process around the metro station yet still try to bring your car uh, for your last mile connectivity uh, in the indian context it so happens that uh, most of them disagree with uh, uh, with that and say that uh, they actually agree with the fact that they can't pay excess parking fee and hence uh, they would rather tend to choose the public transport or other kind of uh last mile connectivity whereas the case here was she actually said that there's already a high parking fee around this transit stations with which people are already used to and hence they might try to look at alternative options to sort of resolve the aspect of parking over there so they there definitely different kind of scenarios uh, as well as situations which happen across different countries so this has to be tackled so uh this the, the game itself gives you that uh, flexibility in order to change certain aspects and strategies and try to make that suitable for the given context great thanks and and speaking of the philippines i know we have uh, at least one participant uh, in the audience here who is from the philippines who mentioned that she's joined more from the perspective of a as a citizen who's interested in these topics you shared a few examples of citizen engagement with the tool how was that organized is this something that a citizen group could organize themselves and and how would they go about doing that yes definitely it initially started with uh, us engaging with different nodal organizations in the city let's say in a city like kochi uh, in india here uh, we try to uh, develop a relationship with the kochi metro first and the, the metro and the local corporation were the one who tried to who actually invited all the stakeholders so they become the nodal agency to sort of organize all the logistics for the workshop whereas we we became the knowledge partners but now the the whole activity and the tool has come to a mature stage where we are trying to sort of share this and and do the say, different kind of collaborations with the local citizens as well and we we have done that in bangalore here where we tried to directly engage with the citizens and sort of organize the workshop for example the stamp workshop which i talked about was was directly organized by us uh, and uh, which engaged not only with the citizens on ground but the entrepreneurs in the city so definitely it has a potential for even the citizens to sort of take up uh, this whole process where we can do the hand holding for them and and it could be organized in that kind of platform as well for anyone looking to use this tool when is a good time to use when would it be useful to to bring this into play i i think when uh, becomes a slightly tricky situation but i think what i could definitely say is if the city is trying to 
look at uh, bringing mass transit as a part of their uh, overall development or when we say mass transit it not necessarily has to be a large infrastructural project like a metro or a brt but it could also be this important and active nodes in the city like city bus stations or city railway station or even it could be any kind of feeder uh, hub uh, in the city which is which is attracting a lot of people to use that kind of mobility uh, or a public transport in the city and and the state we could also determine them as important nodes of station areas and develop around that so if the city is trying to look uh, or make the areas around these kind of mass transits better and if they have certain proposals coming on ground and if there is a way they want trying to look at engage with citizens to to get their feedbacks to to make better proposals this this is the best opportunity you have where you could use this as a preliminary engagement tool in order to get uh, opinions from the stakeholders and also sensitize them about the important aspects of you know safe access to these kind of activity nodes or or mass transit so uh if city has a need yes that's a very good start uh, to go ahead with perfect thank you so much rajiv for your time and for sharing all this information and and thank you to everyone who's attended and if you'd like to follow up about the sam toolkit please do get in touch and uh, thank you again everyone for for joining us